anyone wanted to move the camera around, Maximus, who's moving the camera around right now, is making you lunch. I was making you lunch, and now I'm here editing this video. You're about to watch Meet the Communities, which is one of the favorite events of the Twin Oaks Communities Conference. At the conference, representatives from communities all over the country come and meet the communities. They're given a chance to talk for a couple minutes about their community and what it's about and if they're looking for members. Meet the Communities is a really great chance to get an overview of what exists in the communities movement. What you're about to watch is mostly unedited. I've cut out some speaker transitions and things like that, but basically what you see is what people saw at the event. And if you watch all the way to the end, I will show up again with some concluding remarks about community or something like that. All right, back to the video. Go Alexis, go! Do you want a cardboard? No. Great. Hello, my name is Alexis. I am from Living Energy Farm. That is a community 10 miles away in that direction. We have been there about 10 years. We are energy self-sufficient, food self-sufficient, economically self-sufficient. We have created a model of uh, energy self-sufficiency that we can spread all over the world. We are looking for help to do that. We are kind of close, sort of close to full right now, but we are always looking for more involvement uh, I brought a demonstration of our solar electric system that we are taking to Arizona this winter to electrify homes there. We are going to Africa, Jamaica, different places to do solar energy and help spread the gospel of community. Thank you. My name is Ella and, oh, I'm from Cambia. Um, Cambia is a small community. We're about six adults and three children right now. We are one mile away. Um, we've been around for four years. And let's see what other questions we have. Um, history systems. Okay, so uh, we have these little um, finger books. It says all the important things about Cambia. They're going to be over there in the information table. Um, we have a sustainable living museum and education center that we're starting. Come to our Monday program. We're going to have awesome workshops in permaculture. Um, what else? We do heart circles. We care about heart connection. Um, we do, oh, Greater Awesomeness. Greater Awesomeness is part of Cambia. So we encourage people's passions. We encourage people to uh, pursue their passions. We have weekly check-ins. We hold people accountable for their passions. Um, oh, two minutes is so short. Um, <laughs> what else? Well, uh, some of the things that are uh, obnoxiously weird about Cambia is that um, we live in very bizarre dwellings. We prioritize funky, crazy, creative things. Um, we actually work not that much um, for actual like money or um, on site, and we focus more on personal growth. Cambia is also extremely focused on cuddles. Um, we have a big cuddle puddle infrastructure in the middle of our house. Yes. But nobody really knows exactly why, but it just sort of evolved. Um, Last thing is... We also have a shared work rhythm. So we don't like count labor hours, and it's also not anarchy. <laughs> right. We work together. <laughs> and it's awkward. <laughs> Thank you. Wait, wait, I have one more. Oh, okay. right. So um, I'm representing another community, um, which doesn't exist yet. This is the Louisa Land Trust. Um, so next to Cambia, we have 15 acres of land. Next to Cambia is 18 acres of land that is owned by um, Aaron Heinz, who is hoping to build a space, who bought the land to create another community. And this is not a commune. It is... Like Red Earth Farm or Shannon Farm, it's like a, it's like a community neighborhood, it's a like community-ish, it's, you know. But also a Light. community that is like a commune could uh, buy part of that land and have a commune there. Or you could be a homestead and you could buy part of that land and have your homestead with other homesteaders and live next to Cambia because Cambia is really cool and you should live next to Cambia. Yeah. <laughs> hey everyone, I'm Bruce from Eastwind. There are a bunch of us here, there are five of us here. Eastwind has been around a while. We just celebrated a big party. We have our 45th anniversary. Uh, we have about 70 people. Uh, we make nut butter and we make sandals. Uh, early in our history, we had kind of a large community discussion about whether we'd be agrarian or industrial. And unlike everyone else here, it seems we determined to be industrial. So we have a big factory. Um, about a third of our time is spent in the factory. We make really good cashew butter. Um, I can say that our demographics uh, we're not as racially diverse as we'd like to be. Um, we have a little bit of a gender imbalance, but it's not so bad. Um, 
I didn't do my homework. So we have a very anarchic or informal decision making structure that is kind of uh, difficult to pierce when you first get there. Um, and it results in some kind of common sense decisions and uh, a lot of kind of low level effectiveness. The work gets done even though no one's assigned to do it. Um, and I'm, I'm personally pretty proud of that. Like, it's pretty cool. Um, I don't know what else to say because I'm actually pretty, pretty new. So. <laughs> anyway, if you want to ask any questions, uh, I'm here. We're all here. So, thanks. Where are you located? We're in Missouri. That's a pretty simple question. Thanks. Hi, so I'm from Grace Chip. Grace Chip is a community in Millbrook, New York. We're in a rural interfaith community. Um, so our members are all recent college graduates, and it's essentially kind of a, an intentional community that's set up for um, students who are leaving the academic space and who are interested in, in transitioning into living in an intentional community. Um, and so we all work outside of the community um, in various practice positions. So some examples are in affordable housing development or um, farming work, uh, and working with immigration outreach in the community. Um, the history it was founded last year, um, and so every year there's kind of a new group of recent college graduates who come in, and then there is some consistency between members who stay over from year to year. Um, and so there's kind of a nice structure that we're moving into, so it helps us adjust to living in, in this intentional space. Um, but also we're responsible for creating a lot of our own system and culture. And we actually just moved in three days ago. So we're very new as a community and we're really excited to learn from all of your communities about how to, to go forward with this experience. Yes, ma'am. How many did you say? You? Oh, there's six of us. Hi, I'm Ira and I'm from Acorn. And I'm taking advantage of being an old lady and standing down here, not going up those stairs without uh, a thing and embarrassing myself by moving. Um, Acorn is uh, seven, five miles from here, seven, something like that. Uh, and we started originally as an offshoot of uh, Twin Oaks with an independent community with a lot of support from the mothership. And now we're co-communities and we've grown up. Uh, we were, started in 1993. Uh, we have about 26 member adult members now, and three kids and a and a half or three quarters or seven ninths or something like that. Uh, <laughs> we make decisions by consensus of some sort. Uh, we run uh, an organic uh, non-GMO heirloom seed company called Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. And you would think it means we are really big gardeners, but running a seed company is really about networking and uh, selling stuff for us and all the farms that produce seeds for us and trying to figure out how to be fair and equitable about that, which is not so good sometimes, it's hard. Um, and uh, what else do we do? We ha sometimes have great food and sometimes have ridiculous hippie food uh, of the sort that somebody is really into a thing and they make it every time that they do and you hate it. And you have to learn to live with that. Fortunately, you can make your own food. Uh, if you don't like the look of dinner, uh, you can come and have some of our wonderful heirloom tomatoes tomorrow at dinner and some other exciting food, some probably from here and some that we make that uh, you can see and you can kind of get a feel for uh, the free range version. We have, it's kind of funny, we have the background of being associated with roads and sometimes we think we want to organize our labor and at the same time, some what, like these wonders, we don't like people telling us what to do. <laughs> so somehow you try to figure out how to get something done that needs doing and planning ahead a year in such a, uh, an area. I heard various people uh, talking about looking for more democratic or useful ways to use, you know, technology and organization. I would love to hear what you got to say because, you know, we've tried many things and they work for a while. Uh, so, yeah. Okay, two minutes probably gone. Hello, I'm Leon. Um, I'm part of uh, Next Jetta. 
So what NextGen is, is basically uh, people who are networking over eco-villages. And we have a network in Africa, a network in Europe. There's a North American network. So uh, eco-villages are basically uh, sustainable communities uh, uh, for social sustainability, economic sustainability, and especially environmental sustainability. So if you're interested in that, um, this is uh, NextGena. And we have a very special event uh, in May or June. It's going to be somewhere in the northeast of, uh, of the U.S. or in Quebec, but we're going to have an Eco-Village Summit. So it's going to be an event kind of like this, where we, it's for three days, and we're going to have like, um, an experience where we come together and we kind of form an artificial intentional community for about three days, and we work through some workshops on healing communities, and we also, um, it's also a great place if you're building an intentional community or Eco-Village, um, you could come to this event and learn about eco-villages and how to make a community. Uh, this event is also associated with Thumbs and Audrey, so if you know about both of them, uh, yeah, they're part of Next Jenna. So um, we're going to have some singing, we're going to have uh, activities with movement, we're going to have acro yoga, we're going to have, um, we're going to show what we're passionate about. So uh, just to let you know, if you're interested in um, eco-village pathways and eco-village summit or Next Jenna, just uh, come talk with me and I have this big green sign. Hello, I'm Mikkel. I've been to this conference a bunch of times, but I've never actually stood up here and talked about my community. So here goes, ARE Summer Camp is a summer camp, but it's also an intentional community for a couple months of the year, um, sort of unintentionally an intentional community, but we live very communally and we have a great time. Uh, I've been working there for a very long time. We got quite a few camp people here right now. We're in southwestern Virginia near Withville where Interstate 81 and 77 cross. Um, we usually have about 30 people working there on staff all summer, part of the summer, and we can serve up to 100 campers. Um, we have programs for children, adults, families. Um, we meditate a lot, eat healthy food, have a big garden. Our gardener is here as well. And um, we are always open to having more campers. We need more campers to come to our sessions, but also to work on staff. It's a wonderful experience, the most gratifying experience of my life. And we also have opportunities for people to work trade in a low pressure environment at different points in the summer. And um, do we have a question? That was it stands for the Association for Research and Enlightenment, which was started by a man named Edgar Casey in the 30s and 40s. He was a, uh, a psychic, uh, so they say, and his organization studies uh, mysticism and New Age things. They started the camp, but the camp is more of a communal experience than a, uh, a psychic experience. I, yeah. Um, go, Jimmy, go. Yeah, the thing I find really valuable about camp is that it allows for um, really pure and raw avenues of expression. So, like, even on staff as an adult, I feel like in a lot of ways I can express myself creatively as though I were a little kid. So that kind of dimension of myself can come to the surface. And um, because there are a lot of kids around and because there are a lot of adults trying to create a good space for kids, um, it creates a container in which this kind of expression is very welcome. And it feels really good, and I think it's a very important way for people to express themselves that, um, that kind of can be lost. Like, I've, I've been to some communities where, in a lot of ways, they're really good. Like, they have a lot of cool permaculture systems and are really self-sufficient in a lot of ways, but everyone's so serious. And um, so I think this just provides a really cool dimension that I think is really important to community. And I think the most valuable thing we can offer in this context is that uh, even though I have been working at this camp for a long time, it's a very fulfilling communal experience, and I want more of that in my life. I want to live in intentional community year-round. If anyone is looking to experience something like intentional community for a short period of time, very low pressure, come talk to us, and you'll love it. So, uh, with the Baltimore Free Farm, um, which is a food justice oriented community in Baltimore City. Um, it's 10 years old now. Um, we have a couple people who have been there for eight years or so, but no, at this point, no founding members remain. Um, we're sort of early, tw uh, well, we got 20 somethings, we got early 40 somethings, we got a 60 something. Um, 
There are, we host several overlapping organizations. Um, not sure of the total member count inclusive of all those organizations. Around 100 volunteers and around 20 members. Um, uh, the systems of interaction between those organizations is a can of worms that we won't get into right now. Um, we, so we, we include a housing co-op which has uh, nine housing units, three of which are currently open. Um, we have a community garden and farm with a quarter acre of green space. Um, warehouse space with an event hall used for shows, etc. Um, there's, we host a food rescue program, which um, sort of like pre-dumpstering, collects food from stores and distributors and stuff, and distributes it every week to nine locations across the city. Um, we host Food Not Bombs, cooks out of the community kitchen in the warehouse. Um, we have also, um, talked to me personally about the big brewing system I built there years ago, which then had to move out, has been sitting in hibernation at Acorn for a while. Um, and I'm interested in getting that active somewhere um, for community purposes. Um, and yes, uh, so yeah, we have three current vacancies in the housing co-op. Um, yeah. So um, I don't actually live in Ghana anymore, but I did for 15 years. Um, uh, Leon lives there, but he wanted to talk about his Eagle Village thing, so <laughs> tag on it. Uh, Ghana is almost 40 years old. It's in Staten Island, New York, which is part of New York City, but doesn't feel like part of New York City. They have houses. So they've got eight houses, three businesses, and uh, all um, the businesses are all based on reuse. So they've got a used clothing store, a used uh, um, furniture store, and a used bookstore with a cafe, with like equal exchange coffee, you know, fair trade. Um, they, uh, there's, what, about 80 people there, I think, something like that. And um, there's a, quite an age range um, of the founders, the original founders. I think there's still like a half a dozen still there, which is impressive for people who know community. Um, and um, it's, it, it's, it's urban, but it's not like what people, like, it doesn't feel like New York City. It's houses on a hill, we've got a garden, there's a few ex Twin Oakers who live there now. There are a few ex Ghanas people who live here now, I think. And um, and I know that they have openings right now. Um, they do run these businesses, but at the moment, the uh, work work is full, and so they would be looking for people who have outside jobs or outside income who want to come live there and uh, contribute monetarily to the to the community. So I am part of my tree house which has been around for 10 years. Uh, when we first started, we had about uh, somewhere between 15 and 20 people. Um, it was always meant to be an, a very intentionally lived place. Um, right from the start, we had a bunch of documents that everybody had to read. Um, and they were kind of long, uh, but they were about an, our intentions, about living with one another in very, um, kind of authentic relationships. And that's actually something that we've practiced and we are going to be practicing all the time very intentionally. Um, so we're in, we're right outside of DC. Uh, the metro station is like a mile away and I would say it takes like 20 or 30 minutes to get into downtown. Um, so right now we're 13 people and we all live in one big house. Um, Everybody's got their own bedroom, but we all, we try to eat dinner like most days of the week. And we actually have one person signed up to make a dinner and then another person signed up to clean up. Um, those, we, okay, so we have a, an Excel spreadsheet for our chores, which we find works very nicely. Um, I know it doesn't sound very communal, but that allows us to take into account people's preferences, um, abilities, and their different schedules. Um, so I think it really works well. Um, let's see. Uh, we're based on um, values-based consensus, by the way. So we have two agenda meetings every month and then one community support meeting. Um, and at the agenda meetings, we talk about, we have a space cleared out for if there are things that you wanted to talk about that are a little difficult and um, you want a space to do that with support. Um, but also it's kind of 
like business sort of practical stuff. Um, if things come up, we like to have a practice where folks, uh, where folks are um, have supported conversations. That's something we like to practice. Um, and we actually have clearnesses. Everybody has to talk with every other person once during the year to kind of get through. This is what I appreciate about you. And this is what I find challenging. Um, we try to be sustainable in the way that we live. Uh, we do a lot of composting. We do dumpstering when we can. Uh, we try to think about other beings, like our human neighbors and non-human neighbors. We all pay into a community fund that does the food, which has to be, um, all the purchases should be vegan friendly. Um, Oh, but we have, oh, this is something that people might be interested in, in when forming something. We have a couple of people on a mortgage, and they uh, leased the mortgage to, the, have leased the property to an LLC, and everybody um, tries to buy equity into the LLC at different um, capacities. So it's kind of a... It's a way that we protect ourselves and get through legal uh, hurdles and financial uh, like difficulties. So it's a little awkward, but I think it also gives us like ability to live in a, a place that might be difficult to live in otherwise. And we had like for room fees, we can we actually had consensus about what each room was. I'm going to talk about a thing that I know nothing about, but they messaged me on Facebook and asked me to do this. There are no members currently living at Song Farm. <laughs> they are seeking visionaries to rebirth a community in Douglas, Arizona, near the artist and musician community of Bisbee. They're at high elevation in the Sonoran Desert. The weather is mild and the summers are abundant with life from the monsoon season, and it is only a short distance from the forest and mountains, so the area is biodiverse. After a struggle that dismantled the previous community founded three years ago, changes in ownership occurred, and they are starting anew. Passionate and motivated people are needed to breathe inspiration and vision into this place. There are several studios and houses, underground food storage, a tropical greenhouse, a sunset tower, a pyramid meditation pavilion, an artesian well, and electricity. <laughs> Their goal is to become self-sufficient while providing a space in the community for classes, kid camps, an event venue, retreats, and festivals. There's a person named Stasia that you could email for more information. I will put her contact information upon the board if you wanted to move to Arizona. I asked her about that sunset tower. It is a 40-foot tall watchtower, and I have pictures on my phone. They have 120 acres. Hello. Hi. We are from Eastbrook Farm. We're located in Walton, New York, in the Eastbrook Valley. It's very pretty there. There are many streams and springs that come from the mountains, and we drink the water. It's good. Uh, there are eight of us. We are, we are two of them. Um, the community is primarily focused on regenerative agriculture. We run a market garden in CSA uh, and focus on feeding our hyper-local community. Uh, most of the members are focused on food justice work in some capacity or other. Three of them are very core focused in the farm. I do a lot of dumpstering. I've cooked you a lot of dumpster food, which you will eat soon. I've also written a cookbook if you want to learn more about dumpster food. Um, I've got a bunch of these. Uh, the community is five years old. We are fully income sharing. We've been a community in dialogue with the FEC for a little over a year now. Um, you have anything to add? Well, uh, I'm the builder person, so that goes back to the members. I've been working on some improving houses for people so that we have places to stay. And I built like a walking cooler for the vegetables. Yeah, so we, well, we are looking for members, including more builders, very specific skill sets. We're looking for people with farm management, um, people with building skills, also people with social media and videography skills. We also do a lot of education stuff, so if you want to do educational programming specifically around farming and ecology, this is the place to do it. Um, 
We make decisions by consensus. We make money through the farm and also through outside work. It's a bit of a hodgepodge. How do we relate interpersonally? Uh, like talking? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we have, we have uh, feelings, feelings fires on Fridays. Uh, we, Friday feelings fires? We meet a lot. We probably meet like 10 hours a week or so. And we have dinner every night. We have dinner every night. a morning meeting. <laughs> There's a lot of communication. It's needed. Uh, yeah, Eastbrook is really great. Uh, please come talk to us if you want to find out more. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna go back to New Orleans soon, so if there was a builder person who wants to keep building stuff, we would appreciate it. That's <laughs> yeah. Hello again. We're gonna talk about commune life. Which is not a community, it's a project. It's a nice one. You see that nice video camera back there? That's our video camera. <laughs> uh, so we film mostly inside the FEC. We post things on our YouTube channel. We also run a blog. Yes, we run a blog that focuses on different uh, egalitarian income sharing communities, both in the U.S., which are FEC, and in Canada, and around the world. Uh, so it's a great place to learn not just the details, but how it feels to be living in an egalitarian income sharing community. You can follow Coming Life on Facebook, or on YouTube, or on WordPress. Uh, there's lots of nice media. This will be on there in case you forgot it and want to watch it. Uh, great. Thanks for watching. If you liked that, Maybe you want to check out some of the other videos we've got on this YouTube channel. We've got blog type stuff and stories about just about every community in the FEC. It's a pretty remarkable movement. One of the things we're trying to do at Commune Life is bring a bit of the community's movement into this online internet-y space. If you want to help us do that, one of the best ways is to check out our Patreon page and become a community member. There's lots of perks like nut butter from Eastwind and seeds from Acorn. We really rely on our patrons. They're so freaking great and they help us bring a bit of commune living into this internet world. Okay, thanks. Bye. I'll see you in the next one.